watching, Che. We'll be fossils by the time you're finished. <laughs> I heard there was a disaster in the Divination Commission's delve. I'm surprised you're in the mood to play right now, Ching Chue. Even if the sky was gonna collapse on the Divination Commission, the Master Diviner would be there to hold it up. What she lacks in height, she more than makes up for in stamina. <laughs> anyway, I didn't come here just to play. She ordered me to wait. She kind of reminds me official. Time is precious. I'm simply multitasking. Place in the photo, all right. Is this a games parlor? Uh, what kind of problem can they possibly be facing? <laughs> Isn't this hand a problem? I have the worst luck. Oh, uh, hi there. I can tell just by looking at you that you're the Divination Commission's guest. <laughs> okay. Did you bring us here just for this? Do you even know how long we've been waiting? You don't want the Master Diviner to know you've been slacking off, do you? Uh, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I was going to wait for you by the statue, but... Ah! Triplet! What? But folks from the Realm Keeping Commission descended on the area. It's too loud over there now. Pass! Pass! Seriously? Uh, so I thought to myself... Wouldn't it be better to meet somewhere quieter? Four of a kind! And wouldn't that be more fun, too? Better to show you the real exalting sanctum and introduce you to a true Sam Joe pastime, Celestial Jade! Ha -ha! Victory! <laughs> what? <sighs> now that my wish has been fulfilled, there's nothing holding us back. Follow me, honored guests. Uh, I must apologize for your long wait, honored guests. Okay. Too long. Seeing your enthusiasm for this celestial jade game has stoked my curiosity. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You clearly have excellent taste. Ah, look. Whoa. Is that a... It's an ancient tree. We call it the Ambrosial Arbor. It was once the Sienjo La Fu's prized treasure. Really? I didn't know the Skyfaring Commission were history buffs. Not bad. Younger generations usually don't know much about it. It's said that the Ambrosial Arbor is an ancient remnant from where the Sienjo roamed the ether. From a distance, it looks like half a tree stump. But according to records of the early nation, in its prime, it wound into the heavens and from its celestial bodies hung. Meaning? It means the tree was as tall as the sky and stars hung from its branches. Oh. So, how big was it? Bigger than the Express? Bigger than Herta Space Station? No, that can't be right. Stars hung from its branches. Then, how did it fit in the Sienjo? Uh, well, technically any tree in the spaceship fits this description. Uh, sounds like an unimaginably magnificent tree. Exactly. Let's just say it was bigger than your imagination. <laughs> That's what- <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway, it's just a legend. I see this view every day on my way to work. I'm kind of bored of it. Let's go. Okay. Just a heads up, please don't go running off once we're inside. Oh boy. Maybe the Master Diviner's guests, but she hates people who don't abide by rules and regulations. Oh, and people who ask too many questions, not to mention... Please, don't push her button. So strange. Oh, let me guess, the gate isn't working? I don't understand, it's never been locked before. Uh -huh. No one told me to take a key. Hey! I know the food here sucks, but that's no reason to shut the gate on our guests! Are you really from the Divination Commission? <laughs> Is it possible you were... fired? Or maybe something happened inside? Don't scare me! Master Diviner wouldn't let anything bad happen on her watch. Right. There's no need to panic, okay? 
This isn't the only entrance into the Divination Commission. I know an emergency access. Okay. Looks like we need to head this way. Here it is. You're pretty sharp. Ugh, spell around corrosion. What's going on? Great, this gate won't open either. We've kept the Master Diviner waiting. No doubt she'll blame unreliable Chinchua for messing up once again. Hmm. Yeah. I knew I'd offended that Diviner. That's why she sent this girl to help us. Miss Chingchi, if you don't mind, may I take a look? Huh? Oh, uh, no need. Actually, I was just being polite. I don't see why not. Okay. Let me show you. This thing is pretty fun. Nice. Wasn't bad. Wow, you're amazing, Mr. Yang. You handled that well for an outsider. I officially hand over... Uh, anyone here surprised? Nope. Anyone? Nope. Here comes trouble. Uh, can't we run around to them for a change? <laughs> Savor it in my place. I don't like that they explode. Where the celestial path may lead. This is the Matrix of Prescience, a large-scale Jade Abacus calculation terminal. It's oh. the pride and joy of the Divination Commission. Okay. <clears throat> We've heard the term Jade Abacus a few times now. Would you mind explaining what it is, Miss Chingchu? A Jade Abacus is just... A Jade Abacus. <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> That's a good question, Mr. Yang. It might take me a minute to give you an answer. Let me think. The book, Glimpses into the Beyond, describes it as living jade engraved with symbols for divination into the unknown. Okay. Just like engraving a seal, the craftsmen of the Sianjo Artisanship Commission carve faint symbols into pieces of jade and then insert them into machines to get them to operate according to a certain intention. Okay. Some jade abacuses are small enough to fit inside bracelets and jewelry. We put the bigger ones into instruments of calculation so we can simulate the future and learn from the past. Mm. Take the matrix of prescience here as an example. As long as sufficient information is provided, it can answer questions on anything. From the evolution of natural phenomena to the metabolism of living things. Kind of reminds me of Sumeru. They say the theory behind the symbols was handed down by Noose, the Wisdom Walker. The principles are so profound that in the Divination Commission, only the Master Diviner truly understands them. So, they're computers. It sounds like similar technology. Maybe we'll get a better understanding if we see the manufacturing process with our own eyes. Okay. I'm afraid that's impossible. The Artisanship Commission's Hall of Jadeology keeps a close watch over the jade carving process. Oh. But if you're interested, there's a shop selling jade abacus jewelry in Starskiff Haven. I can show you around when I'm free. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that? She said she's taking Mr. Yang jewelry shopping. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Anyway, don't dwell on names. As long as the machine works, what does it matter whether it's a jade abacus or a computer? True. Just like today. Would it have mattered if Bai Chue had brought you here instead of Ching Chue? It makes no difference at all. What? We're almost at the Matrix of Prescience Core. The Master Diviner should be waiting. Perfect. Diviner Fu. How are things progressing? We are fluctuating between the Heaven and Thunder trigrams. A step forward bridges no distance hence. And for those who don't speak, Fu Shen? <laughs> <clears throat> it's an utter disaster. How's that for a Divination Commission fortune? Ooh. The Matrix of Prescience has stopped operating, and the symbols have dimmed. There are Stellaron spirits wreaking havoc inside the Commission. And the Cloud Knights are struggling to protect civilians. I want to restore the Matrix of Prescience, but I have no forces available. And on top of all of that, General, 
But we still have to deal with the Stellaron Hunter you handed to us. If that's not an utter disaster, then I don't know what is. <laughs> but your Fushen, Vizier, the boundless, omniscient, bringing luck and avoiding misfortune is your strong suit, isn't it? Ooh. You don't need to flatter me, General. It's natural for fortune to fluctuate. There's no escaping it. The Divination Commission simply does its best to uncover the good and the bad and then make the right decisions. We have no magical means to turn the tide. Mm. And that is precisely why we need you in charge. When it comes to handling clairvoyant Stellaron hunters, who better than Fu Shen the Seer? As for reinforcements, you didn't think I'd be unprepared, did you? Look, help has just arrived. Yeah! Master Diviner, I brought you the guests. Though, it wasn't your order I received. <sighs> so general. Even guests are on the payroll these days? Well, since they're here already, I may as well make use of them. Yeah! Entering the Matrix of Prescience without my permission is a breach of protocol. Uh... <sighs> Would be an ungracious thing to say in the present circumstances. I admit I'm pleasantly surprised to see you here. That's better. Jingchue is often unreliable, but she comes through for us when the need arises. Okay, well, glad to have us as your errand runners, aren't you? I thought you were going to have us escorted out. It's nice to have people I can entrust with difficult matters. I'm not like the general, and you don't even belong to my commission. I certainly won't be bossing you around. Okay. No need for the formalities. We heard what the general said. If you need something from us, just say the word. Yeah, what you got? Very well, then I'll keep this brief. The Divination Commission is currently understaffed. I need your help to restart the Matrix of Prescience as space terminals. And eliminate the Stellaron spirits along the way. Alright, I can do that. But, uh, I don't really know anything about this Matrix of Prescience. Xing Chue will accompany you. She'll be in charge of restarting the terminal. As for eliminating the spirits... Psst. <clears throat> I hath divined our future. We are destined to be errand runners. Forever. Just say the magic word. What? Which magic word? Come on. Starts with the letter P. Ah, the universal one? Please? Cheese and rice. Oh. Uh, please. Thank you. <gasps> Good enough. Oh, what the heck is this? It looks like a walking gate. Take it easy. There's nothing supernatural on the CN Joe. It's an aromaton. It's guarding the Matrix of Prescience. They're stationed at various strategic places. Perfect. Uh, I feel like it needs a sign saying mortals forbidden or something. Are you sure it won't fly into a rage if we walk past it? <laughs> We're here by order of the Master Diviner to restart the Matrix of Prescience. Friends, not foes. Passage prohibited. Of course. Uh, March, you should join the Divination Commission. Qu quick, do something. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Yeah. You hate to see it. Is this really necessary? I said I'd cooperate with you. I have no interest in the words of wanted criminals, especially those skilled in the art of manipulation. <laughs> so, say what you will. I'm here to witness the divination of the Matrix of Prescience. The Divination Commission has ways of extracting the truth, and they're far more effective than a conversation. Then please, Master Diviner, witness my destiny. Oh boy. Right. 
What? That's why you're here. All for that? Well, not what you were expecting. I can't believe it. But the Matrix of Prescience cannot be wrong. Well, what did you see? What did you do? Has Kafka pulled one over on us again? Kafka has nothing to do with Estelaron, but you. It's you. Me? Ha! Absurd! I'd never have thought it. Uh. I sense more Fushuan riddles on the horizon. Ask her yourself. Take as long as you wish. What? I must report this to the general immediately. Please excuse me. You go ask her. Uh, I know you still have many questions for Kafka yourself. Oh boy. This is going to be good. Prophets do not prophesize. Hi, Kafka. You haven't changed a bit. Neither have you. I'm sorry you have to see me in such a sorry state. No, no, not at all. Nothing to apologize about. Uh, you don't really look like you're in a sorry state to me, but are you alright? Are you hurt? Hmm. Concerned about me? Yes. I'm fine. The okay. Zienjo is always courteous with its captives. Okay, good. I didn't talk to you on the train because I knew you and I would get to talk alone here. Worth waiting for, don't you think? You seem to have a lot to ask me. Uh, well... <clears throat> what is your objective? Are you really innocent? What did Fu Xuan see? So unfortunately, um... There seems to be some audio issues with this dialogue. And I've already tried restarting the game multiple times and, and my PC, so I don't think it's my PC. I think it's on the game, so I may or may not cut this out. Hey, Lorcha. Hey, you didn't finish telling us about the propagation. Keep going. It's interesting. So, neons can die, huh? Weird. I thought they were invincible. <laughs> there is no true invincibility or immortality in the world. Such exaggerations are born of the perspectives of ordinary beings. Nonetheless, ordinary beings could not have orchestrated the fall of the propagation. That eon was slain at the hands of another eon. I don't understand. They're all eons. Why do they want to fight? You... Are you really from the Sienjo? <laughs> Other eons aside, surely you must know the story of Lan and Yausha. Isn't destroying the Eon Yausha the Alliance's cherished aim? Of course I know. Well, I, I know a little. <laughs> My mom made me practice with swords all day. I, I didn't really go to school. Aww. In that case, let's just change the subject. If you don't know about the feud between the hunt and the abundance, I'm afraid there's just too much to explain. Fine. How's this for a subject? What's in the box? Oh, this one? <laughs> it's a casket, more commonly known as a coffin. It's for containing the remains of the deceased. Ugh. The deceased? Aren't you a merchant? Yes, indeed. This is just part of my job. I was asked to deliver this coffin to the Xianzhou. Ah, I'd quite forgotten. For long life species, death is probably a distant concept. 
Nope. The Cloud Knights spend a lot of time on the battlefield. Death is a common occurrence. It's just we don't put bodies in boxes. Uh, <laughs> coffins. In the Sienjo, people go to the Hall of Karma in the Ten Lords Commission and consecrate the names and jade abacuses of the dead. And that's our way of saying goodbye. The Foxians and the Vidyodora have their own ceremonies. Foxian soldiers place their dead in star's gifts and then let them drift out into the stars. They call it the returning. As for the Vidyodora, they're more mysterious. They say that when a Vidyadara is very old or has a fatal injury, they turn into an egg that looks like a pearl. Interesting. And when the shell breaks, they come out looking young again. Wow, like a form of reincarnation. My mom calls the Vidyadara long scions. When I was young, she told me stories of how the Vidyadara could turn into dragons. I don't know if that's true. It's true. But of course, you know, I wouldn't know that, so... Uh, only special VDR can turn into dragons. I'm just gonna say it's just a legend. What do you know? Silent but deadly speaks. Your mother is right. The Vidyadara are long scions. They are descendants of the Eon of Permanence. That was why some, but not all, could turn into dragons. The power was a rare inheritance, passed down only to those who could successfully complete numerous rites and challenges. For the inheritor, it was hard to say whether it was a blessing or a curse. Hmm. Ah. I've heard the story of Long the Permanence and their descendants. Many myths and legends praise the Eon for a rich and immortal life. But for some reason, the Eon disappeared among the stars without a trace. Almost as if they had never existed, leaving only their descendants. Interesting. Every life has its limit. Even the eons are not truly immortal, and will eventually reach the end of their lives. Uh, let me ask you one more question. Do you know the person in the coffin? <laughs> yes. A friend? No. <laughs> so, uh... A sweetheart? <laughs> oh, miss, whatever gave you that impression? The individual in the coffin is neither friend nor relative. We met only once. By chance, I made someone a promise, and so I have to run this errand. Let's leave it at that, shall we? I think we've all had enough rest. Oh, boy. That was a lot. Let me know what your reaction was when you went through that portion of the cutscene. Did you guess anything right or was anything a revelation? I want to make sure I understand this lore as well as you all do. So please tell me what you have found out so far about our main character in Kafka. Mara struck. It looks like someone's hurt. Wait. Let's think before we act. This will strengthen our position. <laughs> Silent but deadly. Locha, let's charge in together. If we take them out quickly, we can rescue the girl. <laughs> what happened to us letting you handle it? <laughs> I've only got two hands. Please, I'll wangle you a prize for your bravery or something when it's all over. Enough. Let's go. Building it into this sanctuary. This is but a vision. Miss, are you okay? What 
do you think? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't see any blood, so I, I thought you were okay. You're a puppet. A puppet? My motor is broken. I can't move. What? Are you a cloud knight? Good. Take me to the realm keeping commission. I, uh... What? Um, Locha, silent okay. deadly. I'm afraid we have to delay things again. This lady is one of the judges of the Ten Lords Commission. As a Cloud Knight, I must prioritize her orders. Wow. I'm sorry. If I'd known, I wouldn't have got you to come with me. You'd probably be there by now if you'd gone by yourself. Dang. I happen to have some medical knowledge. Perhaps I can treat <laughs> the young lady's injuries? Oh, it's just... she's a puppet. I think we should just take her to the Realm Keeping Commission? Don't worry, Miss Sushang. Leave it to me. You might get an aching or numbing sensation, but it shouldn't be too painful. Do you think you can hold still? It won't work. My body is... Mechanical, not flesh and blood. Be it mechanical or organic, we're still dealing with composite substances. I just hope you'll tolerate my methods. <sighs> huh. Curious. What? How? Oh, what kind of medical knowledge is this? <laughs> abundance. The abundance. Hmm. Very good. Whoa. Uh, no longer need to return to the Realm Keeping Commission. The mission continues. As a judge in the employ of the Ten Lords Commission, I am forbidden from interfering in the affairs of outsiders. However, seeing as you came to my aid, a word of advice. Leave as soon as possible. Why? I came to address the root of our crisis by arresting a fugitive, a Stellaron hunter. This villain possesses exceptional swordsmanship and wields a divine weapon. They are extremely dangerous. <laughs> if it hadn't been for a strange accident, my wake span might have been cut short. Strange... accident? <sighs> Come with me. I've never seen anything like it. Whoa. Meanwhile, in the Divination Commission... You know, even eons can be killed. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh no. Wait! <gasps> this blade! Let's go, Blady. Two more places to visit. <laughs> Yo! That was so tough! Uh, did Kafka escape? Uh, how are we gonna explain this to the Master Diviner? I don't know! If what she said is true, we won't have to explain anything. He's speaking! Hey, did she brainwash you? I wish I could have shared the moment, like all the dialogue between Kafka and I, but unfortunately, the audio was just really bad, and I just, I, I don't think uh, anyone could stomach it. Like, it, it's, it's really bad. Uh, so I'm thinking it might be a bug, and if it's not, and it was just my game, that's, it's kind of weird because everything else seems to be working just fine. But I need to figure out where Fushuan and Jingwon is. So, let's teleport. Wasn't this the dead tree Ching Chue showed us earlier? How did it grow all of a sudden? Yeah. Oh, amazing, absolutely amazing. Even the long lived might not witness something like this in their lifetime. I'm so lucky. Um, maybe someone applied a strong fertilizer. Uh, the ambrosial arbor was imbued with some kind of power though. Such extraordinary energy. It's the Stellaron. Mr. Yang, do you mean 
the Stellaron is making the Ambrosial Arbor grow? Yes, the Stellaron the Cloud Knights are searching for must be causing this anomaly. Unless Kafka deceive the Matrix of Prescience. Stay calm, Diviner Fool. The Matrix of Prescience does not lie. The logic you have laid out concerning Kafka makes sense. It has helped me to fill in another piece of the puzzle. I agree there is a hostile external force at work on the Low Fool. The Stellaron didn't appear out of thin air. Someone managed to sneak it onto the ship. As for the culprits behind the Low Fu's internal strife, I believe we are dealing with the so-called Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, that shadowy organization of the denizens of abundance. Kafka's revelations confirm my suspicions. You... General, when did you have these suspicions? The moment the planter of the Stellaron revealed themselves. The Sienjo has the blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter, and only another Eon Emanator would be capable of sneaking onto this ship without my knowing. We are dealing with an external threat. There are way too many new terms that I have to get used to. <laughs> the Stellaron corrosion continues to flood into the ship, and yet it bypassed both the seat of divine foresight and the shackling prison. There is forethought here. Our enemy must have had access to Lafu intelligence for things to unfold in this way. It is evident now. Okay. The Stellaron hunters aren't the ones behind the curtain. No. As soon as I set eyes on Blade, it was clear to me. But why is he here? And why did he draw the Astral Express? <laughs> that piece of the puzzle still eludes me. Nevertheless, Lady Fu, your intel means the puzzle is more complete than it was before. <laughs> These Stellaron hunters are a captivating group. Such lengths to get the Sienjo and the Express onto the same track. <laughs> Who would have believed it? General, we must retain all urgency. The Ambrosial Arbor. It's the Stellaron. No need to search high and low. The traders have planted it in the Ambrosial Arbor's delve, thereby causing the tree to grow once again. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus couldn't hold off any longer. Every crisis is a turning point. A problem is easier to resolve when you know where it lies. Am I coming up with a plan again? <laughs> of course. I'm sure you have a countermeasure at the ready. Master Diviner. From my perspective, convening the Cloud Knights is our immediate priority. We must head into the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor, expel the Stellaron spirits, and prevent the Arbor's resurrection. Mmm, as ever the Master Diviner's Omnisha provides for the fastest solution. However, sometimes speed is not everything. I have known the Stellaron's location for a while now. So why have I held back our forces? General? Well? You're a scoundrel. Wow! <laughs> Pulling up the grass requires removing the roots. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus have chosen to make their move now. Which means the Cloud Knights have the situation under control and the traders have run out of patience. Now is the time to capture them all in one fell swoop. You've been sitting on that this whole time? How will you justify the losses if something goes wrong, General? Please, Lady Fu. I still have forces to deploy. We were in need of extra hands, and the Stellaron hunters were kind enough to bring us together with the Astral Express. How could I look the other way? Uh, okay, well, let me guess, more errands? <sighs> the general smiling again. Definitely errands. <laughs> it's my fault. I had higher expectations of the general. Please, we can't keep getting them to do everything for us. Since when did we run out of people on the Lawfu? 
You... Why are you staring at me? Do I need to remind you, General, that the Ambrosial Arbor's access point is a closely guarded secret? Allowing Outworlders would be... A violation of the rules and regulations. I would like to remind you, Lady Fu, that the Sienjo comes before its rules and regulations, all the more so in times of crisis. As such, I am about to make a decision that runs counter to those rules and regulations. Oh, uh, decisions plural. <laughs> what a rare pleasure. Lady Fu, I hereby issue you with the military tally. The Cloud Knights will be under your control. You will act in concert with the other forces in the approach to the Ambrosial Arbor through the Alchemy Commission Delve. Under... my control? You've been eager to discover for yourself what it is to be a general, have you not? You've never given me the opportunity and now suddenly... <clears throat> Understood. As you wish. As for our astral friends, I hereby formally welcome you all to join our operation to seal the Stellaron. Yeah! Lady Fu will deploy the Cloud Knights, but I would like you to set off in advance. Take a shortcut through the Artisanship Commission and convene with Lady Fu further down the line. Okay. Um... This is no order, honored guests. I am merely stating what needs to be done should you wish to help us. You've never really seen us as outsiders, huh? Miss Tingyun, I would like you to continue to serve as a guide for our astral friends. Oh, of course, General. I am duty-bound. Huh? Look at all the people gathered here. Not a good day for commuting on the Lafu. The Artisanship Commission Delve should have suspended operations after the Stellaron corrosion began. Why haven't these people taken Star's gifts to safety? Maybe the Artisanship Commission are just more dedicated to their work? The Divination Commission's diviners aren't exactly a hard act to follow. <sighs> At the end of the day, work is work. You need it to live. You know, March, adults forget what relaxation means after a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Just speaking from the heart, that's all. I see Path of Trailblaze doesn't seem to allow for any relaxation either. That's it! First you arrive out of the blue, then the general recruits you to the cause. It's like the stories where Imperial heroes bring salvation to the world. Uh, yeah. Still... <laughs> It doesn't look like they're rolling out the red carpet. We might be getting ahead of ourselves. That's the okay. The Artisanship Commission is full of workshops, building state-of-the-art mechanisms, and craftsmen designing brand new concepts. Periodically stirring up trouble is part of their tradition. Entire buildings vanishing into thin air, puppet riots... You get the picture. Oh boy. It seems like the craftsmen are too afraid to go in. But they have nowhere to run to, either. We should take care, benefactors. Something terrible must have happened. Either way, we'll have to go in. Let's ask around first. Okay. Master Gong Shu. Oh, are you guys Cloud Knights? Are you here to save us? You could say that. Your clothes... I knew I was getting ahead of myself. You're just tourists. Dang. Sorry this crisis came during your trip. I'm sorry it came at all. All good. Um, there comes a time when we all feel sorry, but uh, fret not. I'm the cavalry the general sent for. Yeah, you just need to tell us what the trouble is. <laughs> general Ching Yuan pulled out all the stops to get us here. You can trust us. You mean the general invited you? Is that a joke? <laughs> the Lafu has the Cloud Knights. Why would he send outsiders? There's been a serious incident in the Artisanship Commission. Nobody's in the mood for jokes, miss. Wow. You misunderstand, young sir. We genuinely want to help. Can you tell us what happened here? 
Yeah. There's been some kind of botanical disaster. It was like an ornamental tree somewhere suddenly started to grow. There were branches so thick you couldn't put your arms around them. It spread everywhere. The whole commission is being destroyed. Oh, wow. I don't get it. The Artisanship Commission focuses on the mechanical. We've got nothing to do with hydroponics or accelerated growth. Where did that thing come from? All right. The worst thing is, my master is still inside. Master Gung Shu is the most experienced craftsman in the Artisanship Commission smelting works. He's in charge of our research project. Okay. When the incident happened, he dragged me, Ziming, and Yuncha to safety. But then he turned around and ran back in. Okay. I need to wait here for the Cloud Knight so I can tell them to rescue him. Why did he run back in? Did none of you try to stop him? We didn't have time. We were scrambling for our lives. If I had an extra pair of arms, maybe I could have tried. I just heard him shout, It's gone! We lost the furnace! By the time we realized, he'd already vanished. Okay. Anyway, you said you're here to help us, right? Yes. 100%. The general sent us. You don't have to believe us. The Astral Express doesn't shout about its achievements. We'll look for your master. In that case, take this jade seal with you. If Yo. you find my master, please bring him out safe and sound. If anything happens to him. Don't worry, young sir. Your master's safety is our... None of us would be able to graduate this year. Dang. Uh, 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 <laughs> That's what he's concerned about. <laughs> uh, let's go. I think this conversation's run its course. He's like, I don't really care Not about him. Disaster. It must be the Ambrosial Arbor. But what about the furnace his master mentioned? All right. The Stellaron facilitated the resurrection of the Ambrosial Arbor. The severity of the corrosion becomes worse as it grows. <sighs> Look, the roots are coming up through the ground. I'm afraid we've got some gardening work to do. <laughs> Upon commission grounds, your feet do tread. Leave from whence you came, or soon be dead. Dead. This must be the master. Stay away. If you come any further, I'll not spare you. Uh, uh, hold on. Let I'm sorry, what? Explain. We're not. What excuses do you have? No Surprise me. Just passing by. Stumbled in. Door wide open. Seriously? Within commission grounds today was so. An evil spun by hands unseen, unknown. No long. It was security mechanism. These robots will. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> nice teamwork. Savor it in my place. Dang. That's what I'm talking about. Golden Cloud Toad, Illumination Dragonfish. Are you all right? Wake up. I raised you like my own flesh and blood. You are so ridiculous. <laughs> Did you really have to destroy my little friends? I want compensation. What? You didn't want to listen to us. We were here to rescue you, and you started a fight for no reason. Are you... Master Gongshu? Uh, how do you know my name, child? Does the reputation of Gongshu Liang, the smelter extraordinaire, proceed one? Uh, this guy's pretty deluded for a master. Yeah. We're passing through on our way to the Alchemy Commission at the behest of General Jing Yuan and Diviner Fu. We'd like you to show us the way, Master Gongshu. Thank you, Well, R Really? 
The general sent you? Yes. Then this must be a mere misunderstanding. <laughs> uh, don't worry about those things. Easy to fix. But there's not much I can do to help. The artisanship commission was suddenly taken over by some evil tree demon. It seized our most precious possession, the creation furnace. Oh. It's a dark and powerful entity. The robots. It was like they gained consciousness. They were moving in a circle around it. I fear approaching it is tantamount to suicide. But then I couldn't just run away. Knowing what lies sealed in the furnace. Right. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> I'm sure General Jing Yuan must have believed wholeheartedly that you could save the Artisanship Commission from this crisis. Indeed. Means I know of may yet serve your fight. Pray you in repayment aid my plight. <laughs> Come, come on, <laughs> through here. Perfect. Very good. The master reveals the door, but the apprentice must walk through it. You're much better than my useless students. Dang. Whoa, whoa, what's happening? Is the what? Uh, whew. Seems like it worked. That tree demon must be writhing in pain. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. There's no time to lose. Hurry through the shifting screen to the opposite side before the branches grow back. Okay. Uh, look, the ambrosial arbor's roots. Oh, they've uncoiled the Artisanship Commission's most precious invention, the Creation Furnace! Help me, dear young friends! Let's hack them away together! We can't let the roots punch through the furnace! Okay. Careful, it's changing. What? Oh no! Whoa! He looks so cool! And he's an enemy. Whoa! What kind of monster is this? Miraculous! It creates life at will! Such incredible power! Wow. Uh oh. It's guarding the Ambrosial Arbor's roots and the furnace. Rebirth? What was that? Look at the deer's feet. There are more roots Don't coming up. Touch. No matter how much damage we do, it just heals itself. Not fair. Yeah. We'll have to retreat for now. Follow me. No wonder the Sienjo is so scared of the abominations of abundance. They're unstoppable. Miss Tingyun, are the longwave species on the Sienjo all like this? I'm afraid this Ebon Deer was likely birthed by the Ambrosial Arbor as its guardian. It shares a close connection with the Arbor's roots. Most living creatures on the Sienjo don't have abilities like this. Huh? As long as it's there, we can't get any closer. I wonder... The Ebon Deer seems to heal itself instantly, but perhaps it's drawing that power from elsewhere. So, let's blast it to smithereens! So, follow the roots, we can find the source of its power. Uh, yeah! It can't heal if we take out the source, right? The monster only seems to be active in the vicinity of the arbor. Let's look around and see if we can find anything. Okay. 
So the general asked you to head to the Alchemy Commission, hmm? Uh, the Artisanship Commission had no choice but to halt operations once the Tree Demon appeared. It's a whole row of those gate robots. We saw one in the Divination Commission. Gate robots? Those are Arumatons. The Artisanship Commission created them to stand guard in various locations. Oh, yeah. Okay. Master, are these creations truly able to protect the Artisanship Commission? There's already been so much destruction. Well, why haven't we seen any in action? I... No! Oh, we haven't quite finished the paintwork on this batch. How can we deploy them if they're not looking their best? Any thoughts, Master Gongshu? Hmm. When the deer revives, the surrounding roots glow brightly. Right. Oh, great observation, Mr. Gongshu. It's amazing what you notice when you're not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only an artisan, after all. My skills in Clash of Swords shall find no sake. Yet that which clasheth needeth hands to make. As Mr. Yang said, the deer monster is likely drawing power from somewhere in order to replenish itself. I'm certain that when the arbor glows, we are witnessing that very process. Okay, so let's give it a shot. You know, maybe the root system is the key. Precisely. You remember how we untangled the shifting screen with fire? Well, you're right. Those roots never grew back. Not only that, its reaction suggested we'd hurt it. Perhaps that's our starting point. Okay. Take hold of your weapons, young comrades. Let's raise these roots to the ground. Perfect. Perfect. Aha! See? My theory was correct. Yeah. Look, the roots coiled around the creation furnace. They've withered. Ha <laughs> ha Excellent. Nothing can stop you now. It's time. Let us do this. Ow. Lance, please. Lance. Forward. Mmm. Bearing fruit, what? I am kind of hungry. Marsh, what is happening? Uh, uh, I'm just saying, it'll be a shame if they get smashed to pieces. Seriously? What are we doing here? Yes! It's getting weak. All right, let's, let's slow it down. Yeah. Oh, yes! Slayer of a very dear friend. That wasn't so bad. General Jing Yuan said the Ambrosial Arbor was an unfathomable celestial blessing. At first glance, that deer could have been an ordinary life form, but the ability to heal such grave wounds in an instant... I think I finally understand why the Sienjo decided to follow the hunt in eradicating the abundance. If immortal creations were left to spread their branches and roots throughout the universe, entire ecosystems would collapse. No wonder the people of the Sienjo wander the universe, never settling on a planet. You are a man of vision, Mr. Yang. It's a shame our ancestors, the Elixir Seekers, were unable to see that hidden curse 8,000 years ago. Perhaps some of them did reject the Plague Author's gift. But how could an entire civilization resist the temptation of immortality. <sighs> Ironic, isn't it? 
The wise are buried, while the fools remain immortal. The Sienjo regrets being led astray by the abundance. That's why they have decided to embark on the path of the hunt. Maybe it's not too late for redemption. Thank you for your help. I realize you must continue on to the Alchemy Commission, to the Ambrosial Arbor. After witnessing what happened here, I know there will only be more danger ahead. Go, friends, and stay vigilant. I wish you a safe journey. Okay. Thank you. Yeah! Look at that! Oh snap, now we got a new mission! Oh yeah! That's what I'm talking about! So, tell me! Yo, and Trailblaze level 49! What the spark?! Yo! Desolate Depths of Despair. We need to pass through the Artisanship Commission's shortcut and head to the Alchemy Commission. 